My name is Luke Hoetze and in this K1 Luke video, we're releasing a mini documentary on 22 year old, two time world Muay Thai champion, Daniel McGowan. McGowan is undoubtedly one of the biggest young talents to come out of British Muay Thai for a good couple of generations. Well respected over there by the Thais in Thailand, he's headed back there with a two year ambition of becoming the first British Thai boxer to win one of the most prestigious Muay Thai Stadium Championships. I caught up with Daniel McGowan in the early part of this summer before he recently flew out to Thailand. Support K1 Anoop via Patreon to help us to produce even more films and mini documentaries about kickboxing and Muay Thai. Like K1 Anoop on Facebook and subscribe to the K1 Anoop YouTube channel and follow us at K1 Anoop on all socials. Hadouken! You said that you're looking more focused on fighting in Thailand for the next couple of years. Is there anyone in particular out there you would like to fight the most when you when you when you head out there? No one in particular. I just want to fight them all really. I want to beat them all. My aim is to win a title in the stadium. So whoever I have to beat to win that, I'll I'll fight them all. I think I'm at the stage of my career now where I, I don't I'm not scared to fight anyone. I'll fight anyone my way, I'll mm. fight him. I think I'm in with a chance of beating everyone at my weight at the moment as well. So um, I had some big wins last year and that's really like boosted my confidence. I wasn't never shy of confidence to be fair, but like it's really lifted my, I feel like I'm just on the crest of a wave. So um, I think when I go back to Thailand, that, that's my um, aim is to be what, the first UK fighter to win a stadium title. You, you start uh, with me 11 years old. Yeah, 11 years old, I started with Pan. Um, there was a, there's a local gym called East Area, yeah, and we, East Area. we all train there. And um, that's where I met Pan. And then, um, yeah, he, he just took me under his wing, and then I just, I'd done more one to one with him. And um, with Marky, who you can't see on the camera at the moment. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> Long time. Yeah, so we've been training together for a while. And then, um, then I moved to Liam Robinson's, and I went with Pan actually. Pan and Mark, we, we went up to Northampton together. And then, um, then, yeah, that's where my career really started picking up. I think I was about 14. And then, but yeah, I've been with Han literally, basically from the start of my Muay Thai career. Now uh, Daniel, him, yeah, fight everywhere, a lot of world. Not not worry for him because uh, him have a lot of technique. Him uh, good heart, good everything, good technique. Yeah, power good and kick and knee and elbow, everything good. Daniel, him him learn from Muay Thai quick. Because yeah. uh, him, before um, you uh, take uh, take on the yeah, yeah. and kickboxing a little bit. Yeah, as well. and after him have to change to to uh, quick. Yeah. I grown up with Pan mm. as my teacher, so obviously he's got the Thai, the traditional Thai aspect to it. And I've been brought up, so I, I do like that side of it. But I'm not stupid enough to like to think that doing the Y crew and stuff is gonna make it on TV because it won't. So if we do want to go on TV. The purists have to kind of take a back step a little bit. The two minute, like I've fought one minute rest and you don't even notice. You, if you're fit to fight, a minute rest is nothing. Like yeah. it's, it's fine, you, you're fit to fight. Like, and two minutes is more for the gambling inside. Gambling, you know. yeah, exactly. The only, the only thing, obviously Muay Thai you get cut quite easily. Mm. So two minutes to help the cut, but that's, but other than that, like I think one minute's fine. I think the fighters will never notice it anyway. Like I never do. Like I've done it a few times in America and I think Japan maybe as well. So yeah, and anyone, Muay Thai Grand Prix, I think yeah. do it as well. Yeah, so Phoenix. Phoenix. Phoenix do free threes like Thai fighter things. Well. Yeah, free so, threes in a minute. Like I think, I don't think it's a big deal to be honest. Like I, I, I prefer five rounds, but I, I'd rather if if I was getting offered money, more money because it was on TV, then I, I don't care doing two less rounds. You know what I mean? Like, like taking two rounds away. Like I mean, it's easier for me, surely. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> I think it could get bigger, but a few things just have to change, and a few people have to take a few steps back. Like, like the purists, like I think, I think that's how we'll how we'll kind of move forward. Mm. I've got high hopes, and I'm I'm keeping the faith that I think that Thai boxing will get a lot bigger. I, I don't necessarily think on the on par with boxing. Mm. That will take a long, long time if it ever does. Um, or even MMA. MMA is well well like in front of us at the moment, but I think. For fighters to live comfortably and do it as a living, I think it can it it can happen. I, th I think some fighters are doing it now anyway. So it depends what people want from it as well. Do you want to be a millionaire? I think if you want to be a millionaire, do boxing or MMA and try and be the world champion at that. 
if you want to just be comfortable and live a good life, I think you can do it through Thai boxing. I think you can earn a good wage. I think Harrison's prime example, I think he lives a comfortable life. He's flying, he's always, he's, he's never in the country, I don't think. Like, he's seminars, he's fighting in different places. So, I think, like, there's definitely um, a chance for the young fighters, especially that are coming up uh, in the future, to live off of just doing training and Thai boxing. I think, yeah, I'm, I've got high hopes. You're really young, are you actually taking time out for yourself? Um, yeah, like, so I feel like I've had, in the past, I didn't have the balance right sometimes, so I was just fully training, fully Muay Thai, Muay Thai, Muay Thai. And I got to a stage where I just didn't really like it anymore. And that's, for me, the reason I do it is because I love it. So um, so then I had a bit of time out and I was kind of see, see where I was going wrong because like, it was just random. I just thought, you know what, I had no motivation to train anymore, no motivation to even fight, I didn't really care. but. Now, I, I see my mates a lot still. I train, I'm fit. I, like when I'm not fighting, I'll go out, I'll have a few drinks with my mates. I'll, I mean, I think everyone knows, I'm, I like to go out and have a party and that. <laughs> I can enjoy my life and whilst, I, whilst I'm not fighting, I think, why not, like, life's, life's too short and um, enjoy the time. If I, especially now, now that I've got the time to enjoy, I may as well do it. And um, So yeah, I think that's the, like if I was to give advice to any young fighters, especially it's like get the balance right because I know we love the sport and like, like me they'll, they'll love it like how I do but if you do it's like anything if you do it too much too much too much you, you end up hating it or if you pushed into it don't ever be pushed in forced into it or anything like that if, if just do it if you want to do it and if you feel like you need a couple of months out take a couple of months out come back and you'll be stronger um I think too many people like try to like do too much or do it too much and then they'll get sick of it and then a lot of, it's sad because a lot of them just quit and you don't see them again and i think that happens with a lot of like young fighters like young young fighters say like 13 14 15 like they'll maybe if they're getting pushed into a bit too much they have all the talent in the world and they're probably they probably could be the best in in the uk or best in the world but they've been pushed so much that they get sick of it when they get to especially when you get like drink comes involved going out 18 like but now they've seen there's a different lifestyle. Mm. That's when it changes. So um, get the balance right, and then you, you'll be fine. I think. Sacrifice. So he's willing to give everything. Now I'm not saying that any other fight doesn't, but he will literally live on breadline for his dream. Mm. He won't say, oh, "I want to go to a party this weekend. I want to do this. I want to go away on a lads' holiday. All of that." He's willing to 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 do that. Sacrifice all of that to um, for his dream. And good luck to him. And two, he did start when he's very young. When you start when you're very young, and you get through that sort of trials, tribulations of you mm. know girlfriends, going out, drinking, partying, smoking, all of this, and you, I've seen it with some fighters that have been superb talents, mm. and they get to that age and then they sort of fall off, you know. It, when I talk about dreams, it's, it's a difficult word, dream, but really it's a target. Um, you know, I'll bring it up again. It was like when Charlie was younger and his dream was obviously to become number one and world champion. And, and, you know, he had a couple of hard fights, which he lost and he doubted himself. And then you've got to go through that doubt to eventually your end goal. You will get there, but sometimes it's not direct. You know, you have to dodge a few bullets, and, you know. And our, Miguel was, what, 21, 22? 22. The world at his feet. So... Um, yeah, good luck to him on that. And I think it's that he's, he's willing to sacrifice, give everything up to to become a champion. But he also understands that it's not, you know, you, you're going to have other friends at 22, 23, and probably in settled jobs, maybe putting deposits down on houses. You've got to be willing to push that aside and think about I'm going to do that later on in life. But my dream now, my goal and target now is I want a stadium belt. However, MMA, boxing, you're still quite young to to, to make that. Big transition. Is it something you've mm. ever thought about? Nah, not really. To be honest, um, I I would never rule anything out. Mm. I feel like if I did make the transition, I think naturally, because I because I do Thai boxing, I think the movements of both arts, so like boxing or MMA, the ground kind of game, I reckon I could pick it up quite quickly because I I do pick things up quite quickly in in these kind of sports, um, but. At the moment, I'm happy with my life, in, as in being a Thai boxer. Money-wise, it's not amazing. It's I can live comfortably though, so um, and that's all. I, that's all I 
care about really. You're, is it fair to say you're content from the sport then? Yeah, I'm content, yeah. Like, I mean, actually, nah. I would like a little bit more money, but um, I know that will come. So I'm, I've traveled the world. I've, I've, been, I've done things that not many people my age can say they've done. And I've done that at an early age from like 16 to probably to 18. I've done a lot of the things. So um, I've, I'm having fun doing it. And um, I feel like if I go into something like MMA or boxing, I, I love watching it. I love watching boxing. I like watching MMA. But my, my passion is Muay Thai. And I feel that like that's why I'm so good at, good at it because um, cause I'm passionate about it and I love it. Whereas I don't want to go into something I'm um, not really passionate about and then just do it for the money and then maybe that's when I'll start getting beat or whatever. So um, yeah, at the moment I'm happy with Thai boxing. I'm content, um, but I'd never rule it out. Who knows in the future, um, maybe I will transition into something like that. I've been asked so many times about going into boxing and MMA, but at the moment, I'm, like I said, I'm happy, happy doing it. I, I, want, I feel like I've come too far now in this sport to just go, right, I'm, I'm um, gonna move into MMA or boxing. My, my end goal has always been to, to be a stadium champion or to be a, the best European fighter to ever, to, to ever live, really. Like, I want to like, be remembered for that. For that. So um, I feel like if I quit now and go into MMA now, it's just a waste of like 10 years of hard work. I'm, I'm nearly there. I'm, I don't think I'm too far away from it. So um, I want to carry on until I get to that. I won't stop until I do. And then, then I can think about moving on to something different if, if the time's right.